Welcome to Memorial Stadium, Terre Haute, Indiana. It's the Missouri Valley Football Conference on ESPN3 this afternoon. The four-time defending national champion, North Dakota State Bison, taking on the 18th ranked Indiana State Sycamores. Hello, everyone, along with Danny Hughes, Scott Warman. Great to have you alongside. And here we are, another week at Valley Game of the Week, and we have two top 25 going up against each other once again this afternoon, Dave. Yes, the Indiana State Sycamores have done an outstanding job this season, Scott. And you and I have remembered coming here for several years when we wanted to cover our <laughs> eyes watching this program, but give a lot of credit to Mike Sanford in his third season, who has done a phenomenal job getting the page turn, and now they're nationally ranked. And we know how phenomenal North Dakota State has been over the last four years, but the big headline of this story in this game today is their starting quarterback. They lose Carson Wentz. It's a team game, and uh, it always happens where you lose somebody, and, and this year it happens to be our quarterback. Uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's a guy that's been uh, pretty dynamic in a position here uh, that's so important at quarterback that uh, uh, now we're going to move forward, turn the page. Carson uh, played every game like he was his last, and uh, uh, I, I know moving forward he'll, he'll be a great inspiration to our guys, and we're going to rally around these and step in play good. No doubt, Dana, losing uh, Wentz for Coach Kleeman's squad is a huge hit. Yes, it's tough. You lose your leader, and he's been – uh, a great leader on this offense. Offensive production has been outstanding. Burst on the scene last year and led them to another national championship. He's accounted for 20 touchdowns. Only those two interceptions going to be sorely missed. Sycamores and Bison, number 18, number 8, our opening kick from Terre Haute. It's Valley Football on ESPN3. Deep drop and Wentz it airs it out to the left side for Zach Croft. Twists and makes the catch. Touchdown, North Dakota State. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level at NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. Carnes back to throw. He is hit and he's dropped. Corwin got there. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Hey, Chip, how'd the discount double check work for you? Great. State Farm combined my home and auto, so save me big. Just wish I double checked those 80s throwback uniforms, though. So. One for you. You cannot believe I found your size. Boop. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Cause when he said the 1880s. You liked them though, right? No, I didn't. It pays to double check. Save when you combine your home and auto insurance. Got some folding to do. Talk to a State Farm agent today. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full-time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Missouri Valley Football Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Dana and Hughes, Scott Warman with you from Memorial Stadium as we head down to the sidelines and check in with our other broadcast member for the day, Sarah Daly. Hello, Sarah. So it is getting a little wet, but uh, you mentioned Carson Wentz, and I did have a chance to catch up with him before the game. He's in really good spirits out there. He's in a sling. He was out with the team this morning and also during warm-ups, encouraging them, uh, talking about some motivational things that they're going to do for the rest of the season. He also did say that Easton Stick is ready to go. They have been energized all week. Practice has been really uh, going well. And he also said that, believe it or not, because uh, of the situation, of course he wants it different, but he couldn't be in a better situation with Easton as backup. Take a look at this tweet here. When you uh, have adversity you have two options and he's definitely going to make the best of this uh, unfortunate situation for his senior season guys all right Sarah thanks big story obviously is no Carson Wentz today 
Indiana State wins the toss. They have chosen to receive. They're coming off a huge win on homecoming last weekend here at Memorial Stadium over the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Meanwhile, the Bison not only lose their quarterback, they lose to South Dakota at the Fargo Dome last week. So they're trying to get the bounce back as we are underway. Memorial Stadium and a break for the Bison as Marlon Fleming goes out of bounds at the three-yard line, returning the kickoff. Thrifty Rent-A-Car, you'll find a great rate on a great car rental at more than 300 conveniently located Thrifty Car Rental sites. They are a sponsor of our opening kick. Bit of a mistake there by Mr. Yeah, Fleming. Absolutely. A tough break there for the Sycamores. You don't want to start this type of game against a Bison, a very strong Bison program, uh, with your backs up against the end zone. All right, let's take a look at our impact players for this afternoon's contest. Well, you look at these players. They've been playmakers throughout their career, but Zach Vra and Nick DeLuca have been outstanding for the Bison. You see the numbers, career leader in just about every statistical category for Vra, and Nick DeLuca has been outstanding as of late. 15 tackles last week in a loss, but he's one of the leaders on this team, tied in interceptions, in sacks. He's been phenomenal. He is all over the field. Today's impact players are brought to you by On the Run, the official convenience store of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Booker with the first carry. No yardage gained on that first down run, and back to the ground game once again. And Lamonte will get to the four-yard line, a smothering defense for the North Dakota State Bison on this opening possession. There you see the starting quarterback for the Sycamores, Matt Adam, a young man from California. There you see his numbers last week, 14 to 29 for 193 touches and no picks. Very athletic quarterback, Matt Adam is also dangerous with his legs, can run the ball extremely well, had over 100 yards rushing last week as well. 43-yard touchdown run in the victory against the Salukis. On third and long in the end zone. He'll find his third outlet, but short of a first down, they're going to say it's incomplete in and out of the hands, and it'll force a fourth down in a punting situation for the Sycamores. Well, you wondered where the elements would come into play, the weather obviously with the rain coming down, and it looked like Matt Adam wanted to go to the right side and Gary Owens, but good coverage downfield and just had to go to his outlet and couldn't connect. Osborne Ume handles the punting chores for the Sycamores. Eric Perkins, number 13, standing at the midfield stripe. Nice punt by Ume. Perkins has to go back to his own 43. Get some blockers into Indiana State territory and wrapped up at the Sycamore 35-yard line. Excellent punt by Ume there, but out kicked his coverage. Gave way too much cushion between the pursuit unit and the returner. And a great job and solid field position for the Bison. 53-yard punt and an 18-yard return. There you see the second-year head coach, Chris Kleiman, uh, the defending national champion, North Dakota State Bison. Easton Stick, the redshirt freshman from Omaha, starting in his first start as a member of the Bison football program, and it starts at the NES State, 36. King Frazier will pick up six as he's wrapped up by Conlon Cassidy. This is an opportunity for the offensive line to own the play in the trenches, but Easton has the benefit of having a nice one-two punch in the backfield, as you saw with King Frazier and Chase Morlock being one and three in rushing on this season for the Bison. Sticking with the ground game on, second down, and good push by Indiana State as the Bison will only pick up a couple of yards just inside the 30-yard line. You're right, Scott. That's an excellent job of the Sycamores up front, really doing a good job with that push. Conlon Cassidy 
Conrad Nichols also is a part of this defense. Had a spinal injury just a few weeks ago, but has bounced back and is really a force on that defensive front. This defense is listed as a 3-4, but really they play a 3-3-5, which gives them more athletes on the field. Bison 51% on third down conversions, and it's Stick! He'll go into the end zone! Touchdown, Bison! Excellent job, just a lead quarterback draw with a lot of movement up front by the offensive linemen. And if you had any question about Easton Stick and his abilities, those were answered in that drive, particularly that run right there. That's what they were hoping to get when they lost Carson Wentz, the same type of running ability at that quarterback position. Cam Peterson for the extra point. It is good, so the Bison score on their opening possession and the four-time defending national champion with their new starting quarterback, Easton Stick, have an early lead in Terre Haute. We're for learners, for earning your degree and building a brighter future wherever you are and whenever you can. We're Indiana State University Online. We know that a great education online starts with a strong, real-world institution. And we believe in flexibility, affordability, and lots of options to help you pursue your goals on your terms. Get to know the Better Than Ever Blue online learning experience, because there's more to Blue online. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. North Dakota State University is home to many powerful symbols of success. The heart of NDSU is in our classrooms where we cultivate leaders, in our state where we serve our citizens, in our research where we make life better, and in every one of our students, graduates, and fans. We are the student-focused, land-grant research university. North Dakota State University. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level at NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Easton Stick, the new starting quarterback this week for the North Dakota State Bison. Scores his first touchdown as a member of the Bison on the third down conversion. Daining goes 29 yards and North Dakota State with a 7-0 lead. Got great blocking up front. Chase Morlock also led the way with a good key block downfield. Opened up that gap for the young man. And this kick will be down and we'll have a touchback. And so we'll see Indiana State's offense for the second time their opening possession was a three and out. Mike Sanford in his third year as the head football coach here at Indiana State. And there you see his record, but last year leading the Sycamores to its first ever playoff performance, Dana. And we talked about it a little bit in the open, how he's turned this program around. Trent Miles was here prior to his arrival, and that's when you started to see things kind of turn for the Sycamores. And Mike Sanford has done a phenomenal job with this program and really made them strong nationally. Oh, Booker has popped right at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard. You know, I was talking to Ryan Perot, the sports information director with uh, North Dakota State. He said, you got to keep your eye on number 49, Nick DeLuca. This is a kid who might be playing on Sundays very soon. Absolutely. He does a phenomenal job. He's right at the point of attack at all times, knows how to shed blockers, plays sideline to sideline. 
We talked about his stats, 50 tackles on the season, two sacks and an interception, but 15 of those tackles last week. Booker again on second down, and he'll pick up three to the Indiana State 29-yard line. Seems like the Sycamores are making a concerted effort to try to move the pile forward, particularly winning at the offensive line position, establishing the run. Matt Adam is very versatile, can run as well, but they want to establish their type of tempo in the trenches with their big offensive linemen. Third and five. Bison bring five. Pressure's on, throw complete. First down for Indiana State. Robert Tanyan with the reception for the Sycamores. This is an excellent job by Matt Adam. Recognized the free rushers coming to his blind side, holds it just enough to be able to complete that pass. Booker with another carry, crosses the 40 to the 42 for a pickup of four. When you kind of look at the numbers for the Bison on a defensive end, number two in conference and total defense, yes. number one rush and uh, number two in scoring, you put that together, especially with a whole new front defensive line, pretty impressive with what Ve Coach Kleiman's done. Very impressive indeed, and Coach Kleiman obviously has been around some really good football, and he just keep, continues to manufacture that with players as they lead. Tanya underneath once again and gets another Sycamore first down. Robert Tanya is an automatic mismatch at six foot five at wide receiver. You can't just put a smaller defensive back on him. Two key catches so far in this drive. Keep the chains moving and shift the field position, which was crucial in that first drive that led to the Bison touchdown on offense. Back to pass again, and Adams is sack. Sack back at the 45-yard line. Greg Menard, the sophomore right defensive end, in on the sack. It's a great job by this young man, one of the team leaders. Came into the game with five and a half sacks and just a good push from the blind side again on Matt Adams. Now six and a half sacks on the season for Menard. Adams again feels the pressure. They set up the screen, and Booker is tripped up by C.J. Smith. Well, what the Sycamores recognize is a healthy dose of man-to-man -man coverage in the back end by the Bison and tries to trip them up with a well-timed screen, but give a lot of credit to the Bison and C.J. Smith coming off that corner has had two key tackles in this game so far. Creates third and extra long. 14 to be exact from the Sycamores, 46. Empty backfield. Adam can't find anyone open, and he'll run out of bounds and force another fourth down for the Sycamores offense. Seemed like that was more of a designed run, did not even give his receivers an opportunity to get open, especially when you're considering how long it was to get that first down. May have been a designed run there with the athletic quarterback. There you see Eric Perkins. Ume, who had boomed a 53-yarder in his first punt, gets a nice high spiraling kick. Perkins will call a fair catch at the Bison seven-yard line. Eight minutes left in this first quarter. Greg Menard with a sack for the Bison. North Dakota State is up by a touchdown. Good shot of the four-time defending national champion, North Dakota State Bison on the road this week, taking on Indiana State. We told you last week at home in the Fargo Dome, something to happen that hasn't happened in three years. They fall to the Coyotes of South Dakota at home on a game-winning field goal. The last time North Dakota State lost at home, 2012 against Indiana State. First down carry for North Dakota State. Here's a game last week in the surprising victory for the Yotes over the Bison. 
Well, Scott, these last two weeks, they flirted with danger and got caught up last week. Give a lot of credit to the Coyotes. They stepped up to the challenge and beat them on the home turf. But this Bison team, they just continue to come at you. And I'm sure that they're ready and, and waiting for this opportunity to redeem themselves and get that L out their minds. So far, an impressive first quarter on the road against the 18th-ranked team in the country. Big hole on second down, but it closes quickly. Jameer Thurman with a terrific tackle on King Frazier. Check that. That's Bruce Anderson. Well, if you want to talk about how to close on a ball carrier, watch number 40 scrape to his right gets past the blocker offensive lineman is just not quick enough to get out there and gets right around the legs of the ball carry and does a nice job in bringing him down creating third down that's what they need this sycamore team right now offense hasn't really moved the ball defense has to make plays like that Stick with his first career pass attempt in college, and it's going to fall short, incomplete, and a fourth down for the Bison. Pretty amazing when you look at some of the overall defensive total numbers for Indiana State this year, and they have only allowed one 100-yard rusher this year. Amazing job, and we talked about how this program has turned around and how quickly they've done it. Now you're not just talking about a team that – makes things interesting on Saturday. They actually are strong and formidable opponents, and you may be a little bit leery about coming into Terre Haute and playing against the Sycamores. End over end punt by LeCompte, and Booker's going to let it bounce. It takes a bison bounce all the way down to the Sycamores' 28-yard line. Memorial Stadium, Terre Haute, Indiana. There you see we have a little bit of a win, but at least the rain has subsided midway through this first quarter as the eighth-ranked Bison lead Indiana State by a score of 7 to nothing. Third possession of this first quarter for Indiana State, and they're going to stick with the ground game once again as Roland Genesee, the junior from Memphis, picks up six to the Sycamore 34. And with the no huddle, back to Genesee once again. No room that time as he stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. MJ Stump, who's really had a terrific year on defense for the Bison. Yeah, just one of the several playmakers on this defense. And it looked like the Sycamores tried to run the exact same play again. A lot of credit to Stump there being able to sniff it out and good solid tackle. But in this fast-paced offense by the Sycamores, there's – Maybe times where they're going to try to go back to the well one too many times, and the Bison were ready. One for three on third down conversions. On this third and four, the blitz is coming, and that pass is over the head of Gary Owens, and another three and out for the Sycamore offense. Well, this is a great play by the defense. Obviously, Adam could not make the connection on the swing route, but it was great communication by the Bison up front with the fast motion, the blitz, man-to-man, -man, have to pass off your responsibilities, and they did that in great fashion. C.J. Smith now back to receive this punt for the Bison. Ume with another terrific end-over-end -end kick. And Smith will call for the fair catch inside the 20. They'll spot it at the North Dakota State 17-yard line. 5-13 left in our opening quarter of play. Missouri Valley Football Conference game of the week on ESPN3. Bison up by seven. Scotty, in talking with the people around these programs this week and listening to the coaches on the conference call, the keys for the Sycamores this week before they knew that Carson Wentz was down, it was to limit Wentz and his abilities. But the second key was to win the time of possession. And they haven't been consistent on offense. Yes, it's still early in this game, but they have to figure out ways to continue to move the chains and put some pressure on this Bison defense. Stick back up on top on first down, and his first career completion 
And it is good for a first down as Andrew Bonnet on the receiving end from the pass from Easton Stick. Well, we saw Easton Stick and his abilities to run in the open field, so it's a natural progression to get him outside the pocket and open the door for him for a run pass type of play. That's a nice job. Get the bootleg, move the chains, get some momentum and some confidence in your young quarterback. And I think you just mentioned that, confidence. After he short hopped that third down pass, Coach Kleiman goes right back up top to gain some confidence with the passing game on first down. Looks like we'll have our first penalty of this afternoon's game. You're dead on, Scott, in that situation. And actually, it worked out well for that short hop by Easton in this prior drive because the receivers were very well covered downfield. That could have been a pick six. But in that situation, he had the comfort of knowing that he could run unless he had someone wide open, which he did. You mentioned time of possession. The North Dakota State Bison lead the entire nation in time of possession in this 2015 campaign. Now on a first and five, they'll go back up top again. And a nice out route and a connection is made to Zach Fraw. Great job on the sideline by Zach Fraw. Just your basic out route. Good solid throw by Easton. Putting it in a place where only his receiver could make the play. Frog gets that left foot in. Remember, in college football, only need one foot in bounds. Knew exactly where he was for a nice, safe catch. And another first down for the Bison. Now they'll run the end around and the carry into Indiana State Territory as on the run there was Darius Anderson. Bison have so many playmakers on offense and on that play just a jet sweep with a good solid blocking up front by the offensive lineman. We talked about how important it is to get that type of play and Joe Haig, the left tackle, six foot six senior, 310 pounds, leads the way for the Bison up front. On first and short, they try to go up the middle. A little bit of a power running game, and they'll move that line towards a first down inside the 45, down to the 44. Number 25, Chase Morlock. Chase Morlock was in on the carry there for the Bison. Back to Morlock again, and tough sledding. Might have got a half a yard. Jameer Thurman again coming in with the play, and this linebacking crew for the Sycamores really does a nice job. Very athletic, not very big. Jordan Wallace listed at 230, and Kendall Walker at 235, but Thurman just 215. Tough for those big guys for the Bison to get up to and block. Again, the ground game, and Frazier slips up off the wet turf and loses a couple of yards on second down. And so now, North Dakota State will be facing a third and 12. And right now, one for two on third down conversions in this first quarter against the Sycamore defense. Well, Scotty, you hit on it how strong this Sycamore defense is. And when you get into situations for the Bison that are predictable, these type of third down opportunities for conversion puts a lot of pressure on Easton Stick when the defense of this magnitude knows that it's going to be a pass. Sycamores bring five and we have flags. I think we're going to get a procedure against the Bison. You're right, and give a lot of credit. This play took a long time at the line of scrimmage, and Easton Stick did a nice job identifying the blitz, moving his running back over to the opposite side and King Frazier. And, but at the same time, the offensive linemen have to hold their water. 
trust their quarterback. That was the preseason All-American, Joe Haig, at the left tackle position. That was whistled for the procedure. Now third and 17 from the Bison 49. Under 90 seconds left in our opening quarter of play. Stick with a lot of time, and he'll short hop it to his intended receiver incomplete. Fourth down now for NDSU. Tough to make that type of throw to the wide side of the field with a wet football with such long yardage to go for a first down. It's the second short hop throw by Easton Stick. Lecomte trying to get the coffin corner, and wow, beautiful at the two-yard line. How about that, Dana? Didn't look like it was going to stay in on the field. Looked like it was going to be a touchback, but great angle by the punt there, and now you have, again, the Sycamores with their backs up against the end line. All right, let's check down on the sidelines with Sarah Daly. Well, guys, we talked about uh, earlier the support that Easton Stick is getting at the quarterback uh, position today for his starts. Uh, there's even a hashtag, Support Stick, that's been going around. Some of those Bison fans uh, telling him that they're going to be behind him 100% and just encouraging him out there on the field. And as uh, Carson Wentz mentioned earlier, he's uh, ready for this and he's been prepped all week. So another version of yet these Bison fans just uh, standing behind their team. The game of field position is definitely to the advantage of the Bison here in the opening quarter of play. From the two, first down, Sycamores. And Booker will get a tough yard or two on the first down carry. That was a good job by the Bison up front holding their water defensively. Not really a risk for the Sycamores to have a hard count there to get a free extra five yards and cushion away, away from the goal line. But the Bison held their water and really doing a good job being stiff against the running attack of the Sycamores. Second and nine, they're going to go with an empty backfield here, Danon. Adam on the delay. And Ambrosius and company read it nicely as Matt will only pick up three to the Indiana State seven and another third down conversion coming of the way of the Sycamores as we're winding down the opening 15 minutes of this one from Memorial Stadium. We'll head to the second quarter here in Terre Haute. Sycamores will have a third and five when we come back. They trail it by seven. Welcome to your Missouri Valley Football Extra Point for October 24th. I'm Kelly Burke and following an upset filled Saturday in week three of the MVFC, we now enter the midway point of the conference season. One of the premier matchups kicking off today comes in normal, a first place showdown between conference unbeatens Illinois State and Western Illinois. The Leathernecks 3-0 for the first time since 2000 and fresh off their 24-19 upset of then 12th ranked Northern Iowa. It was Western's first win at the Unidome since 2006 and propelled the now 20th ranked Leathernecks into the top 25 for the first time this season. The Redbirds enter the game 3-0 in the MVFC for the second year in a row. Number three ranked Illinois State coming off a dominating 38-2 win over Missouri State, a game that saw running back Marshawn Coppridge surpass 4,000 rushing yards for his career. Today's matchup is the first time since 1999 that both teams face off as ranked squads. No doubt the biggest shocker of the Valley season so far was South Dakota's upset of four-time defending champ North Dakota State in the Fargo Dome. Miles Bergner hit a 33-yard field goal as time expired to give the Coyotes an improbable 24-21 win in the David versus Goliath matchup. It marked the Yotes' first win in Fargo since 1978 and first win over the Bison since 2002. Now the upset also snapped a 14-game conference losing streak for South Dakota and ended the Bison's record 26-game home win streak. Checking in on the polls, seven Valley teams are ranked this week in the top 25 with two more receiving votes. And six of those seven ranked teams will square off against each other this weekend. 
Of course, if you missed any of today's action, you can relive it. Four of today's five conference games available anytime on ESPN3. For now, we'll take you back to first half action between North Dakota State and Indiana State. All right, Kelly, thanks so much. And Gary Owens, who's been quiet so far today, had a huge day last week against the Saluki State. Absolutely, a huge threat in the offensive game plan for the Sycamores. Had three touchdowns last week, 123 yards receiving. Has accounted for eight touchdowns receiving, 10 total, one rushing and one passing this season. So an intricate part of this offense that hasn't gotten going yet. Give a lot of credit to the Bison DBs. He's only been targeted once on an incomplete pass. Now from the Wildcat. Booker tripped up. Beautiful play coming up on that one was Jordan Champion. Number one, Booker Again, another situation where the Sycamores just could not get things going offensively to shift the field position. And now, another opportunity for the Bison to get the ball on the Sycamore side of the field. This is a team that racked up 561 yards of offense last week against Southern. Ume with another high kick, and Perkins is tackled immediately at the 47 yard line but there's a penalty flag and I don't believe Perkins was given enough room to collect that return or that punt I should say. Well, there's they actually also have another two penalty. flags yeah. one near the line of scrimmage just this is about timing and Phil Wilson the defensive back on the coverage unit for the Sycamores just gets there just a little bit too early. And again, two penalty flags, one near the line of scrimmage and one where the punt were received by Perkins. This may be two penalties that are go against the Sycamores. Rich Edwards is our referee. Well, Scotty, as you can see, we see that the coverage unit gets there just a little bit early, and you have that one-yard halo rule in college where you have to give them an opportunity to catch the ball. That's a great job securing the catch, but penalty nonetheless. Got to be honest with you, I do like the open field tackle. <laughs> yes, textbook tackle right there by Phil Wilson, a junior on that coverage unit. All right, Ume back to punt once again from his own end zone. And he drives this nice high punt, and Perkins calls for the fair catch right at the 47 of North Dakota State. As we open up the second quarter of play, Bison up by a score of seven to nothing. And the Bison have been very successful in the second quarter this season against their opponents as they have outscored them 91 to 32. This is a great opportunity for the Sycamores to come through with a big play. Pay attention to the safety for the Sycamores. Number 38, Marcus Gray, one of the leaders, is filled in some big shoes vacated by Mark Sewell, who was an All-American safety injured this season, and Gray has stepped up and really did a great job creating turnovers, being part of turnovers. They need a big play right now. King Frazier gets the carry into Indiana State's territory, and right there on that particular play, you could tell, Dana, that the offensive line for North Dakota State completely won that battle. You're exactly right, Scott. And there's some big boys on this offensive line for the Bison. And they like to run the ball. Don't want to put too much pressure on their young new quarterback, Easton Stick. Warlock, the deep back. He'll get the handoff on second down. And again, a straight dive play. And Morlock's going to be very close to a North Dakota State first down. 
Great job of push up front. They're going to mark it third and short. And the Bison are actually going to hustle up to the line of scrimmage and try to catch the Sycamores off guard. And stick with the quarterback sneak. Gets the first down for the Bison. That's a nice job. Good coaching. Getting everyone on the same accord up front. Nice push again, and Easton Stick sniffs out the first down. You know, when we talked to the North Dakota State people this week and asked about Easton Stick, they talked about how the young man's very mature for his age yes. and just a redshirt freshman and also very speedy and very elusive. And we saw that with the first and only touchdown we've seen in the opening half. Absolutely. And be on the lookout for more bootlegs from Easton Stick as they continue to try to pound this run game. Setting up the screen, and it is incomplete. As there you see the intended receiver, Lance Dunn, who fell down on the play. You've seen yeah, that with that turf slick jumping up. Yeah. Absolutely, Scott. And this is a nice play also by Alec Lyons, the defensive lineman, making it a little bit more difficult for Stick to get the ball to his receiver. Now, chances are that was not going to be completed, but you can see the outstretched arm of Alec Lyons making that a difficult throw. Lyon on second down, gets a burst of speed and he's tackled by Alex Lyon. Lyons, excuse me, at the 36, so Lance Dunn picks up six on the first down, six, excuse me, second down carry. Lance Dunn, 5'9", 206-pounder from Waterloo, just a redshirt freshman. So Coach Kleiman has the benefit of getting some young talent out there, guys that can make plays, and that's how you continue to build a program as successful as the Bison. You just churn seniors out, get some redshirt freshmen in that can make an impact. Third and four. Frazier up the middle, and he's going to be short of the first down. Decision time now for Coach Kleiman. I think it's a four-down territory with the weather and that situation, particularly with that play call right there. You're not going to necessarily run a dive or a lead dive in this situation with four yards to go unless you are prepared to go for it on fourth down. It looks like the Bison are still good, solid push up front. It's a nice job by the Sycamores, multiple blue hats on the tackle. Fourth and one. Frazier the deep back. Frazier, first down and more. Now a fumble, and Indiana State says they have it. And no official indication as of yet. And they're going to say it's Sycamore football. We talked about it prior to this drive starting for the Bison on offense, how key it was for the Sycamores to get something going on defense, get the momentum on their side, get the fans cheering, and the defense comes through again with a turnover caused Indiana State ball. 12 tech away for the Sycamores. They'll have the football when we come back. Well, we see the fumble was actually called on the field and the play on the field stands. As you can see clearly from this angle, the ball squirted out and give a lot of credit to number 40, Cottrell Moss, a backup linebacker, another redshirt freshman, recognizing the ball on the turf and recovering that fumble caused by Conlon Cassidy, the junior defensive lineman. A big play for the defense. 
And on first down, it's a carry by Roland Genesee to the Indiana State 35-yard line. The Sycamores now plus five in the plus-minus uh, ratio so far this year. Outstanding job on defense, and Scott, you touched on it earlier. Run defense, pass defense has been the heartbeat of this Sycamore program this entire season. Adam, time, and he'll be flushed out of the pocket. He'll get positive yardage to about the 39 and a half yard line. Good coverage downfield by the Bison defensive backfield. Absolutely, receivers are getting rerouted and jammed at the line of scrimmage. A little bit slick out there with the rain coming down, not allowing them to be as shifty as they need to be. But the Bison also have a spy on Matt Adam, not, allow, not allowing him to uh, really be truly effective in the run game. And trying a little change of pace with the running game on the call there, and they just get enough for a first down, David. That was a key opportunity. You have to make the best of a turnover and field position, and this is just good push up front by the Sycamores. Nice tackle by multiple Bison there, but again, a first down. It's interesting, this Bison defense, two captains are both corners. No running room on that first and 10 for the Sycamores from their own 41-yard line. That kind of wondered coming into this game, Scott, what was going to be the most effective of the game, whether it was going to be the Bison defense versus this offense or vice versa. And it seems like both defenses, the Bison and Sycamores, have really come to play so far. Adam on play action, throws incomplete in and out of the hands of Robert Tanyan. Nick DeLuca, among others, on the coverage on Tanya. Nick DeLuca, a playmaker for this defense. We talked about him having an impact and being an impact player. Well, he disrupts this throw, just a nice in route. Matt Adams should be an easy throw, but Nick DeLuca there, very effective in the run game and pass game. Third and eight. Indiana State two for six on third down conversions. And the delay draw by Adam, and it is read beautifully by the Bison defense. Stanley Jones and company get on a stop. This is a little bit of an unconventional offensive alignment where they had four receivers just trying to spread out the Bison. You can see here. Just good, just a twist stunt up front, and Matt Adam trying to run the quarterback draw. Ume's been very busy this afternoon. And they're going to let this one bounce, and a nice play, and it's down deep into North Dakota State territory. But what a save there by number 30, Hockey Woods. Excellent. Oh, now they're going to say he touched the end zone. Wow. That could be crucial right there. And you saw Hockey Woods recognize the bounce, but a little bit too late. Oh. Bison might have caught a break here on the touchback call. Here's Hockey Woods, the fresh third freshman from South Bend, Indiana. And I don't think his toe touched the end zone line there, Dana. No, you can see the green between his shoe and the end zone. And tough break for the Sycamores. On first down, big hole, but a nice open field tackle made on the carry by Anderson as they're on the stop was Cottrell Moss. All right, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Sarah Daly. Well, Scott, 26 games, home games. That was the winning streak that was snapped last week by South Dakota at home for North Dakota State. Now, keep in mind, they've never lost back-to-back -back games. Last time that happened, October of 2009. Following that game, however, there have been four games where they come out strong. 
double digits heading into halftime, and clearly by the scoreboard now 7-zip, that is not the case. Very uncharacteristic for this Bison offense. Definitely so, Sarah, especially without their starting car quarterback, Carson Wentz, who suffered that wrist injury and still played the rest of the game in the loss against the Yotes last week at the Fargo Dome, and now Easton Stick in a quarterback for Coach. Scott, Wentz. you talk about toughness. Carson Wentz, second series of that game, breaks his wrist, plays through the rest of the game, brings his team with an opportunity to escape with a victory and now a week later is in the sling and out for eight weeks he toughed it out that adrenaline was the opportunity for his team and i'm sure there are a lot of nfl scouts that will watch that film pass to darius shepherd incomplete by stick and a three and out for the bison marcus gray one of the impact players for the sycamores comes through with the deflection there textbook coverage man to man reading the eyes of the receiver and makes a deflection creating fourth down and the fair catch is called by booker sycamore football when we come back 646 left in the first half and the trees trail it by seven Terre Haute, 7-0 the score. Bison over the Sycamores. Matt Adam, there you see his numbers this afternoon against this tough Bison defense. That's the young man that has to get things going for the Sycamores to have a chance in this game. Pass incomplete, intended to Samson Levington. Good coverage again by NDSU. Trey Dempsey, the free safety coming down. Man to man again. Talk so much about the corners and their impact for this defense for the Bison, but they're pretty balanced all around the back end. And you consider the losses they had on the defensive side. Chris Dudzik gone as a senior. They just fill in and don't seem to miss a beat. Just reload. <laughs> Booker on second and ten. And he gets a couple of yards, but a lot of yellow helmets surrounding number one. John Allison is in there, number 21, the redshirt freshman from Nebraska. You can't say much about either of these offenses, and you have to give a lot of credit to the defense, but another third an uncomfortable situation for Sycamores. Seven yards to go for the first down. This is Booker back to pass, throws, and it is incomplete as he tried to hit Kelvin Cook, but terrific coverage by Jordan Champion. You're exactly right, Scotty. Tr Champion does a nice job using the boundary as his friend, as the 12th defender, and then watch Kelvin come back, realize he can't make a play. For any wide receivers out there, when the ball is not catchable, you have to become a defensive back and not allow the interception. Take the penalty if they throw the flag, but don't allow the turnover. That's a great job by Kelvin. Ume angles this, and it will take a Sycamore bounce. Nice job once again as... Osborne's done a terrific job punting for Indiana State. Bison will have it at their own 20-yard line with 547 left in this first half of play. Look at the total yardage in this first half, Dana. Bison with 99, and you add that 29-yard run by yeah. Stick when our lone touchdown of this afternoon's game. Meanwhile, ISU would just two total yards of offense amazing credit to both defenses and you have indiana state on the field and doesn't seem like this defense is overmatched and you consider they're missing one of their biggest playmakers on defense actually two of them and mark sewell and connor, connor underwood. underwood yes he was in shorts before the game jogging around still Nursing a hamstring injury. 
And this, this is, is what the North Dakota State <laughs> people were telling us is the running game is where Easton Stick, at least early in his career, is his strength. Very elusive as a quarterback. Yeah, not big, but tough. That's a big hit by Jameer Thurman. He just bounces right up. And he'll keep it again. Huge hole. First down. He'll get 11 on the carry, and they'll move the sticks as the clock stops with 5-12 left in the second quarter of play. And now you're starting to see the method to the madness of head coach Chris Kleiman for the Bison. They had not run the quarterback much. They ran that one play where he scored. But other than that, they moved him from the pocket after a couple of short hop throws. But now you're seeing two quick plays where number 12 keeps the ball, just throws a little bit of a curveball at the defense. Now he'll go up top. Stick has time. Throws complete into Indiana State Sycamore territory. It's his high school teammate, R.J. Erzendowski. R.J. Erzendowski been big for this program over the last couple of seasons. But watch this throw, particularly going to the wide side of the field. The defensive back number 25, Lonell Brown Jr. is right there, perfectly covered, but just enough arc on that throw. That's a great camera angle to see the, the abilities of Easton Stick to get that ball over that first defender in, into Erzendowski's hands. Three plays, thir three first downs on this possession for Stick. He'll carry it again, and he has another first down, but there is a penalty flag right where Stick went down at the Sycamore 26. Well, it looked like Connor Wentz, the tight end, was a viable receiver on this route on the bootleg again to Stick's left. One Stick turned up field. Oh, face mask. That had to be a glancing blow to the face mask because as you saw, Easton Stick fall forward. Seemed like he moved forward fast enough where maybe it was just a, a quick grab, but that's a nice job by Connor getting downfield and becoming a blocker once he recognized his quarterback was going to run the ball. Just our second penalty of the first half and it's a bad break for the Sycamores as the Bison in the red zone for the first time this afternoon, trying to add to their 7-0 lead. Kylan Cassidy on the tackle there as they'll give the Bison maybe a gain of a half a yard on that carry. That's a nice job up front. That play was sniffed out by Conrad Nichols. Got the initial hit in the backfield, could not make the tackle, but like you said, Scotty, creating second and 11, so they're actually going to give them a loss of one on that. Anderson in the backfield with Stick. And he'll get the carry. And keeping those legs churning, yeah. and he'll get near the 10-yard line for a four-yard pickup. You know, Bruce Anderson saw some a lot of action last week, yeah. and uh, the North Dakota State people telling us this week that you can see a lot more of Anderson as the rest of the season progresses. They really are high on this freshman from Florida. Yes, abs absolutely. He's a playmaker, has a touchdown on the season, and they envision him being an integral part of this offense. And what was most impressive about that run is his attention to ball security, he had both arms around the ball, do not want to fumble in this situation. Stick up top on third down, throws, end zone, incomplete, and a penalty flag. Alex Stowers on the coverage, and I think he's going to be called for pass interference. It looks like the officials are conferring because that seemed like a long time to take a play, and obviously there was a lot of pushing on both sides between Vra. You can see right there, Vra had his arm on the shoulder pad on the jersey of the defensive back. And they're going to call it against Sowers. And to me, that's a flag that should be held in the pocket.
based on both guys tugging on each other, the type of route that it was, the length of time that it took to develop. And I can't discredit, as you can see, encouragement as he goes to the sideline there because I – I totally disagree with that call. Now, I'm a wide receiver, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't normally hear that, Scott. No. <laughs> Warlock on first and goal. Touchdown, Bison. Chase Morlock with his second touchdown of the season, and NDSU extends their lead to 13. Got the benefit of a call their way. Get the ball inside the five-yard line. Good push up front. Morlock plants that left foot. Goes to his right. You can see right there Wentz with a nice block. Just a good solid push. Outstretched the ball over the goal line for the score. Sarah, last time we went down to Sarah, she, she pointed at the fact of double-digit Mm -hmm. uh, being up by double digits in each game after a loss, that's a great call on her part, and the Bison come through to make her a profit. Profitess. Is that a profitess, Scott? Uh, I don't know if that's in the that's actual St. Webster Louis Dictionary. Education. Help me out. <laughs> Not from the Kansas City side. Huh? <laughs> so they're going to review this touchdown to make sure that Morlock picked up his second TD of the season. And it was really going to be interesting to see how did North Dakota State respond, not only after the tough loss, the first one in three years at home at the Fargo Dome, but also losing your starting quarterback and one of your leaders in Carson Wentz, and especially from a defensive side of things, uh, very impressive here, especially when you consider <laughs> Indiana State with 561 yards of offense last week here at Memorial Stadium. Well, you, you hit it on the head. This this defense for the Bison has stepped up, and then now you have two scores based on mistakes by the Sycamore defense that the Bison took advantage of. So two touchdowns with two, just over two minutes left in this first half as they confirm the call on the field as a touchdown. And the extra point is good. And Peterson with the extra point. Two touchdown lead for Coach Kleiman's Bison, who are ranked eight this week in all of college football. Three penalties for Indiana State. And here's the field goal, by the way, the game winner for the Yotes on the road at the Fargo Dome. And talking to some of the North Dakota State people, even today, Dane, and they were saying that after they got the two touchdown lead last week at home, it was more of a very different feel yeah. in the Fargo Dome, not only on the sidelines, but also in the stand, a very quiet yeah. crowd. You know how loud that place can be. Absolutely. And Sometimes you can take your foot off the gas pedal, not just on the field, but in the stands. And you assume because of the length of success that this Bison program has had over the years that that was just a foregone conclusion that they were going to win the game. People probably got on their phones and just started relaxing. And a lot of credit to the Coyotes because they did not give up and came away with a huge victory for their program. Denton will receive this into the end zone and indecisive will now take it out. And to the near sidelines, he's tripped up at the five yard line by Trey Dempsey. Wow. That's, you got to have communication back there with your other guy that's back there receiving the kick, correct? Absolutely. And I, and I think his helper, his fellow halfback back there, actually had the stop sign up but was about 15 yards away from him and by that time tried to squeeze in and before anyone knew the ball was out of bounds now here's the key and we can't see it from this angle did the ball go out of bounds or did his foot go out of bounds i mean go into play i should say his foot did definitely and, and if the ball was still in he could have 
kneeled down and got the ball in the 20. But this is the third time now in this first half where the Sycamores have their backs against the goal line. And pass incomplete to Gary Owens, who is yet to pick up a reception here this afternoon. And you mentioned three of the possessions, the opening one where the kickoff was caught out of bounds at the three, then the two, and now the five-yard line. Makes it extremely tough, especially in these conditions. You don't say either quarterback throwing the ball very efficiently. And Indiana State. Start. I'm sorry, Dana. In Indiana State averaging their uh, possessions in the first half from their own 18. This one from the five on second and ten, and Book here will get the carry to the eight yard line. Timeout. North Dakota State. North Dakota State burns one of the three timeouts <laughs> to stop it with 147 left. Until that timeout, both teams had their full allotments of TOs. You see Coach Kleiman getting some conditioning in as he runs all the way down to the end zone to call that timeout, make sure he gets the attention of the officials with one minute and 50 seconds left in this first half. He recognizes his offense may have an opportunity to get the ball and put some more points on the board, but watch as this play unfolds nice job by the defense you can see another big play by and there goes the sprinter coach chris Kleiman, former player at uni actually played there while i was at the university of iowa he played with obviously greats like kenny shed and Diedrich ward but the biggest name kurt warner was his teammate there. Still got some, still got some speed. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Third and seven. Adams throws and it is almost picked off. Incomplete, again, good coverage as they had Owens blanketed there and the coverage was by Jalen Allison. <laughs> I think there'll be some people that'll wonder, why would you call this type of play? Because if it's incomplete, the clock stops. Well, this is a nice job trying to take a chance to their best receiver with good coverage. And the defensive back makes a nice jo does a nice job on the deflection. Jalen Allison, just another redshirt freshman coming up with the big play. Dimpson sliding over to give some help too, if possible. Perkins calls for the fair catch and he'll collect it at the Bison 43-yard line. 137 left in the opening half. North Dakota State trying to add to their two-touchdown lead. They have two timeouts remaining. Well, this may be the biggest defensive situation for the Sycamores. A lot of momentum on the side of the Bison. They have an opportunity with one minute, 37 seconds left to put some more points on the board and go into halftime with some more momentum and a healthy cushion. Stick is stuck by Thurman at the 45. Jameer Thurman has had the responsibility of paying close attention to Easton Stick. And it comes up with a couple of big sticks in these last two drives on the redshirt freshman quarterback. Easton back throws. Ooh, dangerous pass incomplete. And there was Thurman again. Oh, so close to an INT. This is a great job by Thurman, who's been a playmaker for several years for this Sycamore program is built more like a strong safety and right there the coverage abilities to mirror that. You know one of the things we noticed when Trent Miles actually took over the program and its resurgence here in Terre Haute was the fact that he had very active athletic linebackers. That yeah. continues with Coach Sanford. Third and eight as the rain starts coming down here in Terre Haute. Sets up the screen. Frazier's got a lot of running rooms. Has a first down and more. Stops the clock with 104 as he's wrapped up 
at the Indiana State 39, 64 seconds left. Well, this play call is outstanding by the Bison offensive coordinator and recognizing the tendencies of the Sycamores to come with that blitz on third. They tried that same play earlier with the ball carrier slipping. Oh, what a catch and an interception. What a play by Lanell Bla Brown who makes the pick and the second turnover of the game for North Dakota State. Well, on the last scoring drive, Easton Stick threw a pass just over the outstretched arm of Lonell Brown Jr., but this time, five foot seven, climbs the ladder, deflects it to himself, and comes up with the big key turnover, the second of the game for the Sycamores. Excellent job of concentration here. Watch, watching the Sycamores warm up before the game, their entire defensive backfield went through a tip drill to each other and celebrated afterwards because they successfully were able to tip it off to 15 or 20 of them, and that comes in handy in that type of situation. Adam flushed out of the pocket, and he'll just have to throw it away on first down. Again, Sycamores have three timeouts remaining. We have 40 seconds remaining in this opening half. They trail it by two touchdowns. Now we're in another identical situation to the last set of downs for the Sycamore offense where they're stopping the clock in the passing game. The Bison still have two timeouts left, so another incomplete pass here could give the Bison opportunity to call timeouts and get the ball back before halftime again. Adam in the pocket throws and it is complete and a first down to Robert Tanyan. 45-yard line of the Bison. They stop the clock and move the chains with 33 seconds remaining. Quickly, Adam again back throws out of bounds. Samson Levingston. It's a nice job. Momentum has shifted again to the Sycamores. Two quick throws. Get some positivity on this offense. Levingston's able to get out of bounds. They can make some substitutions on offense and get into a play that will continue to keep their foot on the gas pedal. Adam on play action. Lots of time. Great pocket up front. Nice job. Robert Tanyan wants to have that one back out of his hands. Looked like Tanyan lost focus just a little bit trying to get out of bounds before catching the ball or at least focus on getting out of bounds. And how about this pocket right there? That's the first and cleanest pocket that Matt Adam has had all game long. Good strong throw to his left. Just could not make the connection. Third and six. Two for nine on third down conversions in this first half for the Sycamores. Eisenbrink four. Underneath, Genesee. Escapes one tackler, gets the first down inside the 30, down to the 26 and a late penalty flag. Again, Sycamores have all three of their timeouts remaining, but we do have a late flag after the catch and run. This could be crucial here with 10 seconds left on the clock. Do you... This penalty allow the Sycamores to get closer to the end line or to the goal line, an opportunity to take one more shot downfield for a touchdown. See right here, great job securing the ball in traffic and then at the end, just a little extra by number 63 Aaron of the Steedle. Bison, Aaron Average Steedle. Steedle. Steedle gets the uh, penalty, and that's the first penalty of this first half for North Dakota State at the most inopportune time. And I'm sure head coach Chris Kleiman is speaking to his defense about that type of situation and not getting 
ahead of themselves or not allowing their emotions to get the best of them because now you have first and 10, the ball on the 14-yard line or inside the 14-yard line with an opportunity. With, they put two more seconds left on the clock, 12 seconds to take one shot to the end zone and then maybe have to settle for a field Only goal. Only one thing. Yeah, may, I, I say with shotgun allowing the pass to develop, Unless it's a quick play, I think you may only have safely one opportunity to go for the end zone. Now you have Robert Tanya, and we talked about the big wide receiver, six foot five. Although both of these corners for the Bison are really good cover corners, if you can isolate Tanya on the outside, you may take a shot downfield for him to out jump. Oh, a little unconventional out here. And Adam throws, touchdown, Sycamores! Caught by Andrew Maine. I don't know if you saw it in the near <laughs> sidelines, but Coach Kleiman was running down to try to get a timeout, and he couldn't get it before the ball was snapped. Well, this alignment was unique. They took advantage of the defense identifying an offensive lineman. Preston Collier, number 73, was flexed out. Eidorn with the extra point, and the deficit is cut in half by Indiana State as they trail it 14-7, which is seconds remaining in this first half of play. That's a huge drive, big play for the score there, and now with 10 seconds left, as you can see, right at the Left side, the bottom of your screen, number 73, Preston Collier is outstretched. Looking like he's going to run a bubble. They have to identify him. Miscommunication in the back end opens the door for the tight end down the seam. And the official looked like he may have wanted to call a penalty on that. The celebration and the spike there, but uh, the emotion again by the Sycamores. But that's just a huge play. That's a... A great drawn up play and give a lot of credit to the Sycamores and the coaches, Andrew Maine coming through with that touchdown catch. How about this, Dean? Man. Before that drive, Indiana State had 55 yards of total in offense. That was a 52 yard drive. So they nearly doubled their offensive output just with that final drive to get on the scoreboard. And it came after a turnover which kind of kick-started the Sycamores and got them emotionally back attached in this game. And Anderson will get the touchback with just 10 seconds left in the opening half. You talk about momentum. Well, yeah. Indiana State needed a spark, and they have a spark as they get set to head to the locker room after 30 minutes of play. Well, there wasn't very much that Mike Sanford and his coaches could celebrate in that first half. The offensive production was dismal, as you just noted, to 55 total offensive yards prior to that last drive. But I'm sure the their mindset has changed since that last drive and that score. Bison. We'll go to locker room at the half with the 14 to seven lead. And two turnovers costly for Coach Kleiman's squad. Speaking of Coach Kleiman, with his team up 14 to seven at the half, he's with our Sarah Dale. Now Coach, your D held them uh, shut out basically into that last play right there. What do you have to do next half to make sure that stays the way and put some more scores on the board? Well, we can't turn the ball over. We did it a couple times and uh, that's going to affect you. And then uh, I thought we've played well. I thought we've had good energy, but uh, we've got to go make some adjustments and uh, we got another 30 more minutes. Quickly, uh, Easton Stick out there. He seems to be settling down a little bit, kind of uh, slow at the at first. What is going to change the second half? What are you going to tell him in the locker well, room? We've got a lot of confidence in Easton. He'll come out and play his tail off second half again. Thank Thanks, Coach. Coach Sarah, thanks so much. We played 30 minutes here at Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute, Indiana. Easton Stick with his first career start. He has a touchdown as he has the Bison leading the Sycamores at the half by a touchdown.
Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Halftime of our Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week here on ESPN3. It's Indiana State taking on the Bison from North Dakota State. And kind enough to join us right now is the Director of Athletics here at North Dakota State University, Matt Larson. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you, Scott. Thanks so much for having us. Well, first of all, let's talk about this football team. Obviously, unprecedented four national championships in a row. What has this done for the athletic com uh, department and the community as a whole with all the success? Well, I think the biggest thing that we've seen is now Bison Nation really has gone across the country. And so whether it's fans or donors or just or just people that are so caught up in the story of what Bison Nation and what the football program has done is now we're seeing we have supporters all over the country. And so it's it's been a great look into for people to take a look into Fargo, look into North Dakota State and see what a great place it is. And so anytime and that's a lot of college athletics is the front porch sometimes. And so people get a chance to take a look at how special a place it is. All right, Matt. Tell us a little bit about cost of attendance because I know that's something that's new and it's becoming popular. Yeah, we announced this summer that we're going to do a cost of attendance across the board for all of our sports starting next summer, or excuse me, next year. And for us, it was about a couple of things. One, we believe in the legislation, trying to support our kids at the highest level when they're there. And then really from a recruiting uh, standpoint, a lot of the programs that we're recruiting against, whether it's football, lacrosse, uh, excuse me, football, wrestling, soccer, we're, we're going up against schools that are that are offering cost of attendance. So in terms of being on a level playing field with the other institutions, that was really important for us. All right, I know a lot of facility upgrades as well with the, your campus. Yeah, two major things. Last year we put up a bubble over Dakota Field, and so with the weather sometimes in Fargo, having that indoor place for, for all of our outdoor sports to get into, it was great last year during that national championship run for the football team to get out of the elements and get inside the bubble. So that was huge for us. And then we're doing a $41 million renovation of our athletic complex and adding what was the old BSA, the Bison Sports Arena, adding about 125,000 new square feet on that, new weight room, new basketball practice facility, renovating the whole entire space, new locker room. So that's going to be a huge shot in the arm for a lot of our programs, not only in training and our student athletes and competing, but being able to recruit the, the next group of folks to come to Bison, to Bison Athletics. So does that have any effect as far as what you're trying to do while you're doing that construction with your current uh, sports teams? Well, we've been a little, we've been a little disjointed in terms of we have, uh, you know, right now our administrative office, we're about two and a half miles off of campus, and so we're scattered a little bit. But, you know, it's one of those things where the light at the end of the tunnel is so bright for us, it's, it's two years of being dis disjointed, but it's, it's definitely worth it. I know you're a happy camper because obviously we know about the football program, but you've had a lot of success with some of your other programs too. Basketball, going to the NCAA tournament, what have you. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that's great about North Dakota State is we're a broad-based program. You know, our softball team last year, 23rd in the uh, 23rd in the country, basketball back-to-back, -back, uh, wrestling just joined the Big 12. So it really is a, a success across all programs in North Dakota State. Matt, thanks for the time. Continued success, man. Thanks so much. Matt Larson, the Director of Athletics at North Dakota State University. Back at Memorial Stadium, our halftime show continues here. It's Valley Football on ESPN3 as Indiana State playing host to the four-time national champion, North Dakota State Bison. Got him to join us right now is the Director of Athletics here at Indiana State, Ron Prettyman. Always good to see you, my friend. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. All right, let's uh, talk about your football program first and foremost. I know you're proud since you've taken over this pro, uh, this uh, athletic department that this football program has seen sites it's never seen before here in Terre Haute. Well, we've uh, we've got great leadership. Our coaches are terrific, and the, the community has supported us so well. And uh, it's a it's a lot. It's been a lot of fun to watch the program turn. That's for sure. Especially go to the playoffs for the first time last year. That was a thrill, and uh, our alumni has rallied, and it's been. Uh, it's been fun to watch it progress. And to see Trent Miles do what he did, and now Mike taking over from what Trent built up. Trent did a great job. We inherited a tough situation when we got here 10, 11 years ago now. And uh, uh, we were able to hire Trent, who really turned the program, and then bring in Mike in. It's just, uh, it's just uh, icing on the cake. There is a lot of things I know that you were telling me going on around campus. First of all, let's talk about the track facility. Got a brand new track facility. When it gets fully built out, it's going to be one of the nicest in the in the nation. Uh, we've got a nine lane track with 48 inch wide. Most, most lanes are 42 inches wide, so it's a great competition surface. We've got a, a great uh, throwing and jumping area that are completely removed from the track. So uh, all those events can go on at the same time, which make it a little more spectator friendly. And it's just going to be a wonderful uh, facility. Where is this located at? It's over on the Wabash River. It's part of the city uh, riverfront beautification project. And the university has really jumped into that. So we're, uh, we're proud to be a part of that. Record amount of attendance this semester at Indiana State. Yeah, we had... Uh, we had the former record was in 1978 and we broke it this year so it was a 
It was a huge, uh, huge effort. Great job by our senior leadership in the university, uh, our, our admissions directors, our vice president for uh, advancement, our president just all jumped in and it's been a university effort and uh, we're really pleased to see that kind of growth for our school. Ron, I know you have a very busy spring coming up and I know you're really happy about this. The baseball tournament in the Missouri Valley Conference is coming back to Bob Warren Field. You know, we remodeled our field uh, four years ago, and we're really excited about that because this will be the second time in three years that we will have hosted, and that's a tribute to my staff, to our facility, and then we also have the the uh, we also have the uh, track and field championships coming here this spring. So my staff's going to be busy, but it's always going to be nice to be home. Always good to see you continue success, my friend. Thanks so much. Good to have you guys here. That is Ron Prettyman, the Director of Athletics here at Indiana State University. Sycamore is taking on the Bison. It's our Valley Game of the Week. More of our halftime show. It's... Valley football on ESPN3 this weekend. We're in Terre Haute, Indiana. Memorial Stadium as number 18, Indiana State. Trails number 8, North Dakota State by a score of 14 to 7. Dane and Hughes, Scott Warman with you as we take a look at the Missouri Valley Conference standings heading into this weekend's action and of course ISU WIU another big matchup this weekend for the top spot in the Valley. Should be a great game just including this one obviously here this weekend. Absolutely. Western Illinois what a job that they've done in McCall. 3-0 to start the season in Missouri Valley play. Outstanding. As we take a look at the scoreboard, nothing going on. We told you that Western Illinois, Illinois State matchup. Southern is at home against Youngstown State. That's a night game. Meanwhile, the Jackrabbits, boy, what a job that Coach Stig has done with that ball club as they take on Northern Iowa. Surprisingly enough, Northern Iowa looking for their first conference win tonight. Yeah, they've had a tough road so far, and they're hoping to change things against the Jacks. And the schedule coming up next weekend. We will be at Missouri State as uh, they will play host to South Dakota State. Meanwhile, this Indiana State team, it doesn't get any easier as they'll have to head to Normal to take on the Redbirds. And of course, the Bison on the road down in Carbondale to take on the Saluki. Take a break. We'll have more of our halftime here at Memorial Stadium. The number eight Bison up by seven. The leading rusher for Indiana State, Lamont Booker. He's ran nine times. We get Beth back and ready for the second half of our Valley Game of the Week. It's brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Indiana Strait trails 14 to seven and their head coach Mike Sanford is with her own Sarah Daly. That's right guys, now uh, looking for a spark so to speak, heading into halftime and you got just that. What did you tell the guys in the locker room that needs to change for the second half to pull out a W? Well the big thing we've got to do is we got to continue to do on defense what we started to do there in the second quarter was stopping them. And we got to score points on offense. We got to we got to get more on first and second down, and we got to convert third downs and and score more points. All right, thanks, Coach. Go okay, thank you. All right, Sarah, thanks so much. As the Bison trying to bounce back with that loss last week to South Dakota at home at the Fargo Dome. Let's take a look at the pictures from the opening half of play. Easton Stick with his first career start, and he gets the first touchdown of the afternoon. Dave. Yes, he did. He got a great job of blocking up front. Chase Morlock with the lead block, and then it was the defense coming through for the Bison as they've done so often with constant pressure on Matt Adam. Go to the second quarter. King Frazier right here with the fumble, and then still up top on another possession, and a terrific defensive play, and eventually Chase Morlock on the third possession of the second quarter would get the touchdown, but an interception here by Lonel Brown would set up this TD for ISU. So impressed by the defense for the Sycamores. They've stepped up time and time again and now taking advantage of mistakes and miscommunication in the back end by the Bison. The Sycamores are able to score going into halftime to pull the deficit within seven. 52 of the 107 total yards of offense for Indiana State came on that touchdown drive to end the first half for the Sycamores. That's a great job. They had to get something going, going into halftime. Not much to cheer about before that final drive. And you saw the time of possession. We talked about the Bison being excellent this entire season. 16 minutes 
just over 16 minutes in time of possession in that first half when they're averaging between 36 and 38 per game when they're winning. So that was cr crucial for the Sycamores to get things going. Second half kickoff is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. You'll find a great rate on a great car rental at more than 300 conveniently located Thrifty Car Rental sites. As Mr. Heidorn gets a set for the second half and this will go to the end zone, Bison will have the touchback to open up the third 15 minutes of play here at Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute, Indiana. Well, this is the first opportunity, a great opportunity for the Bison offense to try to get things going at the ball on the 25 yard line after the touchback. They need to get some guys going offensively. We talked about the impact players coming into the game. Zach Vra has only been targeted twice, has the one catch. Nick DeLuca, solid on defense. They need a little bit more from him. Conversely, Gary Owens, four targets, zero receptions so far in this game. And Marcus Gray, also solid on defense. Both defenses, Bison and Sycamores, have really come to play today. First down carry. And that's Lance Dunn, and he'll get to the 33-yard line. Our impact players are brought to you by On The Run. Has everything you need in one convenient stop. Fountain and frozen drinks, gourmet coffee, a variety of freshly made sandwiches, salads, and snacks, and automatic car washes. On The Run sponsors our impact players of the game. Nice impact play of eight yards on the first down carry for Mr. Dunn, second and two. And they'll run the end around, get the first down. As tripped up on the carry for North Dakota State is Dimitri Williams. It was a nice job by the defensive end watching at the left side of the screen, just tracking Number down Williams and being a part of that tackle. But what you're seeing these first couple of plays, Scott, is a concerted effort by the Bison to try to attack on the perimeter. Really didn't have any consistency up the middle. Now they're trying to get on the edge and use their speed. Sticking with the ground game, Anderson with the carry. He'll get to the 43 yard line. It's a nice Number tackle by Sully Lau. The junior defensive He's back, just five foot nine with the textbook tackle in that safety position. Surprisingly enough, we, I think that's the first time we've actually called yeah. his name here this afternoon. One of the leaders in this defense, we talked about it, a 3-4, technically a 3-3-5, three, three, allows more speed to be on the field. Stick, nice hesitation, and it'll be wrapped up a yard short of the first down at the 48-yard line of NDSU. But nice job by the redshirt freshman to wait for his blocks to get sustained to make that push up the field. Absolutely patience, and that's not what you expect to see from a redshirt freshman making his first start. That hesitation in the backfield right there, and allows his blockers to get a little bit more push up front and open up that gap to create this third and short situation. Third and seven on third down conversions for the Bison in the opening half of play. This is a third and one. Morlock stacked up, no go, lost the yard. How about the push by the Sycamores? Excellent job, big third down stop. Number 40, Control Moss in on the stick and not listed on the two deep, but has stepped up and made big hit after big hit in this game. Good penetration up front. You can see just stops the impetus of Morlock there and drives him backwards. Exactly what you want to see in those short yardage situations. That momentum from the first half has carried on into his first drive for the Sycamores. A cop in over in. Booker collects at his own 15 and will go down. Sycamore's first possession is coming up in this second half. Big third down stop here for the Trees. They trail it by seven. Attention, Sycamore. Attention, Sycamore fans. Have your tickets ready. It's time for the Clever Girl giveaway. 
Today, one lucky winner is going to take home a Clapper Girl gift basket full of an assortment of Clapper Girl products and the gift card. Today's lucky winner is... North Dakota State University is home to many powerful symbols of success. The heart of NDSU is in our classrooms where we cultivate leaders, in our state where we serve our citizens, in our research where we make life better, and in every one of our students, graduates, and fans. We are the student-focused land-grant research university. North Dakota State University. Hey, Chip, how'd the discount double-check work for you? Great. State Farm combined my home and auto, so save me big. Just wish I double-checked those 80s throwback uniforms, so. One for you. You cannot believe I found your size. Boop. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Could have he said the 1880s. You liked them, though, right? No, I didn't. It pays to double-check. Save when you combine your home and auto insurance. Got some folding to do. Talk to a State Farm agent today. We're for smart business for balance sheets, partnerships, and market share. At Indiana State University, we're for helping you advance your career, for climbing the corporate ladder, or going out on your own. We're for investing in your future and ensuring a strong ROI. That's what you'll get with your master's in business administration from the Scott College of Business. And you'll do it on your terms, with evening classes and full or part-time options. At Indiana State University, there's more to your MBA. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level at NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. Indiana State will have their first possession starting at their own 15-yard line. Their first possession in this third quarter of play. And it's been tough starting field position all afternoon, Dana, and for the Sycamores. They've averaged the 20-yard line so far today. Adam on play action on first down. Underneath, caught, and wrapped up for just a gain of about three yards. That was... First off was Lamont Berker, but obviously that wasn't as number eight is Lafio Falatanani. Uh, as you see right there, the biggest threat for the Sycamores offensively is Gary Owens. Thrown to four times, zero catches for zero yards. Not a factor so far in this game. As he's left uncovered in the slot down at the bottom of the screen. Wow, Adam with running room. Breaks a tackle. Bison territory. Can he go all the way? Touchdown, Sycamores. 81 yards. Huge play for the Sycamores there. Matt Adam, you wondered why they left Gary Owen open. They tried to rotate down a missed tackle in the open field, and then the speed. Then the monkey gets on his back, but he's able to keep his balance and cross the goal line. Big play. You understand the momentum there and the, the emotion, but this offensive line for the Sycamores has been categorized as maulers, as, again, the Sycamores come out unconventional on the two-point attempt. Then set up for the conventional extra point opportunity. This for the tie. Man. Tied over the extra point is up and good. Watch the rotation down at the snap. You can see from this angle. Now it's about being elusive in the open field and speed pulling away from the linebacker and in for the score. see the initial alignment by the Sycamores on the scoring play. They leave Gary Owen open in the slot, but over rotation by Pierre G. Tucker, the outside linebacker for the Bison, and then the elusiveness of Matt Adam in the open field. The speed from the quarterback pulls away. 
for the huge score for the Sycamores. But man, that was eight men in the box, Scott. You always hear about going against potent running attacks. You want to put eight guys in the box. Well, the problem with that is when the eight guys don't field their responsibilities correctly, you leave huge gaps open for a ball carry to have a big run like Matt Adam. Big play for the Sycamores to tie this game. 81 yards, we're tied at 14. Anderson, one yard into the end zone. And wrapped up at the 23 yard line. Sully Lowe. Integral part of this defense for the Sycamores goes down on kickoff coverage, makes a big tackle inside the 25 yard line. Now we'll see how the redshirt freshman responds. Easton Stick in for the injured Carson Wentz. Impressive first half in his first start of his college career. Absolutely right, Scott. Easton Stick has done a nice job. And you consider going against a defense that has sustained a lot of injuries this season to key players. Frazier spinning off three different tacklers, still on his feet. And what an effort to get to the 27-yard line. Extra, extra effort by this King Frazier the there. Keeps Frazier those legs area. churning. <laughs> Conrad Nichols in on the stick right here. Plant goes downhill and just breaks through each tackle. Sully Law coming up from the safety position. Good positive yards, six yards on that first play carry. That's what you show the young kids when they are, the coach always tells you to keep those foot, feet moving. Yep. Perfect example right there. Now on play action, stick, throws, incomplete. R.J. Erzendowski couldn't come up with a catch on the diving try. Excellent coverage. Stick. Travis Stark. Solid senior cornerback gave up a lot of cushion, recognizing Erzendowski didn't have a chance really to beat him deep and sat on that comeback route. It is an extremely difficult throw for Stick. Starks had a 100 yard interception return for a touchdown earlier this season against Southeast Missouri State. Third and four. Sycamores bring four. First down for Bison and Moore as the pass is complete to Darius Shepard. They really believe this young man can be a big playmaker for the Bison. Redshirt, another redshirt freshman from Blue Springs, Missouri. Just a bubble screen on the outside and allows him to get the ball on the perimeter again. Talked about it in the first drive of the second half, the Bison concentrating on attacking the perimeter of the Sycamores. Successful there. And on the first down carry, Eisen only pick up a couple of yards. Lance Dunn again in the backfield on that carry for the Bison. We've seen a lot of different mixes and matches in yeah. the backfield for Coach Kleiman here this afternoon. Uh, with really going with four different type of running backs at any various times. Yeah, that's one of those good problems when you have so much confidence in fall, four ball carriers to be able to, in this tough game, tough environment against an extremely strong defense, that he, Coach Kleiman, has a lot of comfort in those guys to be able to take them to the promise line. Stick on play, action throws, and it's complete. Erzendowski with reception and the first down at Indiana State Territory. Run out of bounds at the Sycamore 43. Bison doing a nice job mixing run and pass, and they have to get Fra and Erzendowski involved in this game. Those guys are playmakers. Erzendowski came up huge in the national championship game last year. A couple of key catches in the final drive against Illinois State to go ahead with that score to win the championship and got those playmakers here now, get them the ball as quickly as possible. Stick and Erzendowski have known each other since about the fourth grade from the Omaha area. 
So obviously, they don't have to learn too much <laughs> as far as each other, as far as the timing is concerned. That procedure call is the second penalty this afternoon on the Bison. The smartest receivers at any level make sure that the quarterbacks are their best friends. Uh, you can have other receivers as friends, but if you're smart, get connected with your quarterback. Room, room with them. Go eat with them. He'll find you on the field. Stick again on top, first and 15, and overthrows his intended receiver there, number 87, Connor Wentz. Bison trying to spread out the defense of the Sycamores there. With the tight end Wentz going to the short side of the field, just a, allowing Easton Stick to kind of read the defense and see who's giving up the most cushion. Should be an easy pitch and catch, and they just could not connect. Stick again back on second down and almost gets sacked. And now he'll throw just with the pressure and a couple of Sycamores breathing down his neck, and now we have a late flag. Silly play by Conlon Cassidy, number 99, a junior defensive lineman. Had pressure, was the initial hit on Stick. He took his helmet off. That is the third defensive penalty on the Sycamores. It looked like Cassidy thought he was being held. Nice job by Stick evading the sack, but at the end of this play, he's screaming, Cassidy screaming at the official, takes his helmet off before he leaves the field. Right in view of the official, and that'll cost you right there. Four penalties for 44 yards so far in this game for the Sycamores. And again, three of them on the defensive end. As it'll be a keeper for his stick inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line before he's wrapped up as we touch on seven and a half left in this third quarter. Sycamores and Bison are knotted at 14. This defense has played so well, but yet they've had two crucial penalties. That last one by Conlon, and then earlier on, prior to the Bison touchdown, they had a penalty that brought the ball inside the five-yard line. Can't afford that against this type of program. Stick again. First down and more, and he's wrapped up by Thurman at the 13-yard line. Easton Stick doing a terrific job driving this Bison team right now, tied at 14. Watch the block by Andrew Bonnet right there on the cup block, the second level on Sully Low. Opens the door for Easton Stick to get those extra yards and first down. Bonnet is a, listed as a tight end, also lines up as a fullback, which he's there right now, but just an excellent blocker in the open field. Stick by time, throws, in zone, touchdown! His first career touchdown pass for Easton Stick. 13 yards out. What a response by Easton Stick and this North Dakota State Bison as his longtime friend R.J. Erzendowski comes up with the reception. Great job of nonverbal communication. Erzendowski is actually covered as Stick comes out in the pocket, but this is not what you necessarily want to teach your quarterback is to throw back against his body, but that just goes to show you the two young men that have known each other since fourth grade can read each other's thoughts in perfect fashion, come through with the clutch touchdown. Nice throw and catch. Cam Peterson. Adds to the extra point. Six minutes, 25 seconds left in the third quarter of play. 
What an answer by Hunter Stick, Easton Stick, and the North Dakota State Bison as they regain the lead by seven. Stadium on the banks of the Wabash River Valley, our Missouri Valley Football Conference game of the week. Valley football on ESPN3. What a drive by North Dakota State to answer and regain the lead at 21 to 14, led by the redshirt freshman Dana Easton Stick. Great job by the young man's come through. Hasn't made many mistakes. Fill some big shoes, and again. Uncertainty More on the kickoff return for the second time by Tyler Denton. More miscommunication, not a cert enough to keep Tyler Denton in the end zone. He can't afford that kind of hesitation. Momentum is bringing him out. You can see the frustration by Lamonte Booker trying to hold the young man in the end zone to get the ball on the 25-yard line. Now. Scott, what is that, the fifth time they've started? Inside the 20. Inside the 20. Oh, look like a penalty by the Bison is going to force a re-kick. Offsides. This game started off relatively clean. It's gotten a little sloppy as of late. could have been crucial to the Sycamores. Now is a lifeline for those young men, and particularly Tyler Denton. So now you see Denton. He's actually the up back of the two deep backs with Booker now, the deep back for Indiana State, standing at the Sycamore goal line is now this kick will come from LeCompte at the 30-yard line with the five-yard penalty on the offsides call. Booker decides to take it, and he'll carry it out. And again, great coverage as Booker's not even going to get it to the 20-yard. They're going to give him forward progress just to the 20-yard line. Actually made the same mistake <laughs> as Tyler Denton, where momentum was coming out of the end zone, didn't pick up his... Halfback, time to take a kneel down and get the ball at the 25. Those guys have to do a better job as a former return man in the NFL. You have to do a better job. You see the average yards per play for both squads dead even at 5.2 earlier. Before that last drive, before the end of the half, it was 2.04, the Sycamores. Well, you consider it a big play by Matt Adam. Bumps that average up. Easton Stick earlier with the touchdown run. Bumps that, pe that uh, number up as well. Well, last week, Indiana State, again, against Southern Illinois, had 561, since 561 yards in total offense. They had nine explosive plays for 20 yards or more. That Adam run for the touchdown of 81 yards is their only explosive play yeah. they've had today. That's right. Adam up top on second and eight, and he'll just throw it away. Good pressure in the face of Matt Adam. Jeremy Keller. Right here, you can see good pressure, not a sack, but effective nonetheless. Sycamore is three for 10 on third down conversions this afternoon. Number 56, Caleb Butler, that right defensive end for the Bison. That's his responsibility, is the jet sweep or the quarterback bootleg. Blitz coming, Adam. Tackle at the 20 yard line and a late penalty flag. Good pressure inside. Adam Adam is Looks like it's a holding position in the backfield and it's a great job by number 61 Brian Shates the senior defensive tackle Shates 
Ineffective series for the Sycamores and good momentum but for the Bison. Watch the movement up front, just a twist up the middle, forces Matt Adam outside and Schatz is right there. Grab around the ankles. Osborne Ume has been a very busy young man here this afternoon, the Indiana State punter, and has done an exceptional job and continues. Another fair catch call for by Perkins, and the Bison with terrific field position as they'll start this possession at their own 44-yard line. That's the eighth punt today by Ume. We watched him coming out of halftime, and first question I had, Scott, was why is he even warming up? He's been on the field more in the first half than I'm sure he's used to. That leg be nice and rubbery by the end of the day. All right, so let's see if this momentum carries over for the offense. It did with the defense with the buys of regaining the lead of seven points at 21-14 with 5.13 left in the third quarter of play. Frazier's the deep back. He'll spin for three. And you mentioned it right at the outset. We saw a couple of plays on the opening possession of this third quarter in the second half by North Dakota State, Danon, where they were using the perimeter. We haven't seen that. We've seen mostly between the tackle runs for the better part of this game by the Bison on the running game. Absolutely, and I think they have to make some adjustments. They have had a healthy mixture of run and pass, but getting on the perimeter is probably going to be the key to their success offensively. Stick with the carry, penalty flag, bridge down and more inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. But again, a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Looks like it's going to be in holding territory again. He's just about to give a lot of praises to this Bison offensive line. Chop block. I believe this penalty is on number 66. And I'm not sure about that. Illegal chop block. By definition, the blocker has to be engaged with another defender, or the defender has to be engaged with the blocker, I should say, and then another blocker chop. But right there, it did not seem like there was any true engagement at the point of attack. Tough break for the Bison. Second and 21. Sets up the screen. And they'll get back to the original line of scrimmage and more all the way to the 48. So a pickup of 15 yards as that was Darius Anderson, Anderson excuse me, on the reception. Nice job, good movement up front, and then you see the tackle up front getting downfield. Jack Planker, six foot seven, 321 pounds. Movement at the second level, number 54. Jeremy Kelly has been at that right guard position for most of this game as well. Very effective up front. Stick, pressure, keeps it alive with his feet, going for the first down and he gets it. What an effort by the red shirt freshman. Outstanding decision, great toughness by Easton Stick. Little Russell Wilson pump fake in the open field, fakes the jet sweep and right here gets flushed out by Cassidy. Ronnell Brown Jr. who came up with the key interception early in the first half is on, on that tackle, but just late before Stick could get that first down. First career star start for Stick, and it doesn't look like it here this afternoon against the 18th ranked team of the country. Stick steps up, throws a strike, and a first down. Anderson on the reception. I'll tell you what, Conlon Cassidy talked about the 
mishap he had on the last drive, on the scoring drive for the Bison earlier in this half, has been consistent in his pressure in the backfield on Easton Stick, just cannot secure a sack. So really uh, flushing out Stick just about every play he's back in. Stick will take the handoff to Lance Dunn, and he'll tumble forward to the 26, give him about five or six on that carry. It's almost like you could even see in the second half that the young man is gaining more confidence on each snap. Absolutely, and that last play was indicative of that because he sensed the pressure and the attention to the ball carry and opted to keep it on the zone read. He's taking a lick, and he's going to have to learn how to slide a little bit more. He's a really tough kid, but can't allow yourself to take that many big hits. Fakes the option. There is a penalty flag. It has to be, yeah, on a face mask as he would take it down. Looks like Easton's going to be okay. I mean, heck, we could see that all yeah. the way up here. Yeah, you can see this penalty right here as he's running the option to the left side. and. That's scary, man. Automatic first down. Yeah. Clear as day, and fortunately, that young man gets up and brushes it off. Yeah. I don't know what's more impressive about his performance today. 11 rushes, 99 yards, but how he's just in control on the field. This is his first start in college football. Amazing. From the Sycamore 12. Morlock on the screen and he drops it. I think he heard those footsteps from Jordan Wallace. Now remember he only had 10 pass attempts in the first half. He's already at nine in this third quarter. Sustaining drives, and that's been one of the keys to success for this Bison program is extended drives, time of possession, consistent pressure on opposing defenses. And that one is incomplete as he Try to swing it out to Shepard and forces a third down. Speaking of time of possession, you know, that's one of the things that has been a constant in success, if you will, for North Dakota State. Number one in the nation in time possession. Meanwhile, for Indiana State, they've only had five plays and have controlled the ball for just two minutes and six seconds in this third quarter. Yeah. It's a great job by their defense, but even more credit to the offense. As you saw after that last play, Easton Stick, Begging to the sideline for a towel. Seemed like his hand was wet. That last play, he was fortunate as that ball was actually a lateral but had enough speed to get out of bounds. Blitz is coming. Stick. Stick. End zone. Touchdown. A redshirt freshman does it again. 12 yards out. His second career rushing touchdown and the lead's back up to 13 for NDSU. Outstanding job keeping his composure. This was a fumbled snap. He couldn't get the grip of the ball and just kind of made something out of nothing. And then watch as he gets downfield, the block downfield by Nate Moody, the wide receiver on the perimeter, opens up that gap for Stick and the touchdown. Over 100 yards rushing in this game so far. Two touchdowns. Ball control, very effective, very impressive. Redshirt freshman from Omaha taking over for Connor Wentz today. And man, he has put on a show big time for the Bison. Very effective, passing the ball, decision making has been key, using his athleticism, toughness. Excellent blocking on the perimeter and 
up by two scores, in part because of that man and his production today. We talked about Carson Wentz and what he brings to the table every single week, rushing and passing. Look at those numbers. 240 total yards and three touchdowns accountable to Easton Stick. Two on the ground, one via the air to his longtime pal, R.J. Erzendowski. 14-point lead for the eighth-ranked Bison. 33 ticks remaining in this third quarter. This will be a touchback, by the way, Dana. Good decision by the Sycamores there. Well, what wound up being such a promising start to the second half after carrying that momentum for Indiana State after getting that touchdown right before the end of the first half and then Matt Adam going 81 yards to tie the score. It has been all Bison basically ever since. Not to take away any credit by the Bison or for the Bison, but I'm sure Mike Sanford, the head coach of the Sycamores, if they lose this game, they're going to go into the locker room and film sessions on Monday, talk about the mistakes, the penalties that penalties. led to touchdowns, the miscommunication on the kickoff returns that led to bad field position. Booker, no running room on first down. Think about this. Right now, they're a plus two in the turnover margin. Yeah. Defense has stepped up and covered for a lot of the mistakes offensively and on special teams for the Sycamores. And could you imagine if they would have been solid in those two areas where this game would be? And yet, still, they have an opportunity to bring this game back within one score on this drive. So the four-time defending national champion and eighth-ranked North Dakota Bison. Get set for the fourth quarter on the road against 18th ranked Indiana State. Big score by Matt Adam for Indiana State, but the Bison answer back. Stick by the air, stick by the ground, and the Bison up by two touchdowns as we get set for the fourth. We're for community, for sharing ideas, appreciating differences, and finding common ground. At Indiana State University, we're for bringing together bright minds from big cities and small towns, from around the world and down the street. We're for broad perspectives and big ideas, for honoring our cultures and celebrating our futures. We're for blue, because no matter what we look like, in our hearts, we're all blue. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. North Dakota State University is home to many powerful symbols of success. The heart of NDSU is in our classrooms where we cultivate leaders, in our state where we serve our citizens, in our research where we make life better, and in every one of our students, graduates, and fans. We are the student-focused, land-grant research university. North Dakota State University. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full-time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. ESPN 3, fourth quarter just to get set underway here at Memorial Stadium as Indiana State trails the North Dakota State Bison by a score of 28 to 14 as we check in with Sarah Daly. That's right, Scott. We do have a special guest here at the game, uh, Coach Mike Sanford. 
also the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for Notre Dame. What's it like to get the opportunity to come out here and see your dad in action? Uh, it's it's pretty outstanding um, just to, you know, to have a chance to do this in the middle of the season and, um, you know, support them against one of the best teams in all of college football at any level. And uh, just so proud of what they're doing, building this program up. Um, the staff, uh, my dad, obviously, and these players. So uh, we've got to find a way to win this ball game. We've got to find a way to squeak it out. Well, clearly it runs in the family, but about eight years ago, there was a special flight from Las Vegas to San Jose that uh, really changed your career, so to speak, and a relationship with uh, Coach Harbaugh. Explain that just a little bit. Well, you know, I just uh, had a chance. I was a graduate assistant working for my dad and on the same sideline as my father back in 2006, 2007, and, and working for my dad. And he, uh, both he and my wife told me uh, right when Jim Harbaugh got the job, you got to get on a plane and go meet him at his press conference because there was a familiarity with Coach Harbaugh and with myself. And uh, so I, against my will, I, I decided to go there. But, uh, it, was, it, was, it was obviously a game-changing experience for me. And, um, you know, my dad's always been a go-getter. He's always been very aggressive. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that that's had a lot to do with my career and, and, and going where I've been able to go. Well, good luck the rest of the season, and we appreciate you taking some time with us today. Appreciate it. Go Irish, go Sycamores. All right, All right guys, back to you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Great Sarah. stuff. Great and stuff. Coach uh, Sanford Jr., good luck to the Irish for the rest of the season. As Matt Adam going with the home run ball and was almost intercepted by Trey Dempsey. Second and 10 for the Trees from their own 36. Just underway fourth quarter. Our Valley Game of the Week, it's the MBFC on ESPN3. Looks like a little confusion there, and Adams is going to have to throw it away. You're right, Scott, but going back to that previous play, Robert Tanyan Jr. going down the seam. Again, this is the second time in the game where Matt Adam throws the ball up for grabs, and the wide receiver has to turn into a defensive back, and that's a great job making sure Trey Dempsey does not come down with the interception. You can't make the catch as a wide receiver. Make sure no one else does. Adam. Throws, connect, fumble, and they're gonna say incomplete in and out of the hands of Kelvin Cook. Redshirt freshman from Ohio and a transfer from Miami of Ohio, and with 14-13 left in the fourth quarter, North Dakota State is about to get the football back, up by two touchdowns, but maybe the more and more amazing thing as we see Adam back to pass here again, is their leading receiver, Gary Owens, has yet to catch a pass. Amazing, and that's just a testament to this defense and how they've stepped up to the challenge, the Bison, but you have to figure out ways to get your playmakers the ball if you can't get it conventionally downfield. Ume again drills this. And this one will go out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Bison's football, when we come back, they lead it 28-14. Terre Haute, Indiana is the site of our Missouri Valley Football Conference Game of the Week. It's the MVFC on ESPN3. Eighth rank Bison up by two touchdowns with 14.04 left in the fourth quarter of play. Dana Hughes, Sarah Daly, Scott Warman with you. Great to have you alongside on this Saturday afternoon. And the Bison, Lance Dunn on the first down carry, will pick up seven. Number North Dakota Lane State, as Sarah Lane mentioned Lane. earlier, Danon, has not lost back-to-back -back games 20, since Jameer October Corman. of 2009. Of course, Second coming off that loss last week at home at the Fargo Dome to South Dakota. King Frazier, no running room as he'll be wrapped up right back at the line of scrimmage, Alec Lyons. Scott, oh, I, Scott, I want to go back to that last comment you made about this team and what they've been able to do in bouncing back after losses, and that's just a testament to Craig Bowl, and now you have Chris Kleiman that have been able to instill in these young men an ability to put losses behind them quickly and then come out, and come out in great fashion the next week, and they've done that several years now. 
stick. Trying to spin for a first down. I think he's going to fall short by a yard. There's Conlon Cassidy, big number 99, outside of the mistake he had taking his helmet off and getting the penalty. He's really been very solid in pass rush and run stopping for the Sycamores all afternoon. Only the second three and out for the buys an offense this afternoon on the road. LeCompte. Oh, he really drills this one. Booker back all the way to his four. Booker. What great coverage downfield by the Bison. Holy smokes. And who's in on that, Scott? Nick DeLuca, the playmaking linebacker, again on the coverage. Ben LeCompte happy with his teammates on the coverage. Bison up by 14. Rainstorm moving into Terre Haute again as we have 12 minutes left in this fourth quarter. Sycamores with the football as they trail it by two touchdowns and Booker with the carry is tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard on the first down carry and the poor field position to start possessions continues here in the fourth quarter again for Indiana State. Dave. Indiana State has just continued to put themselves and have to give some credit to the Bison, but there have been instances where it's been all about the Sycamores and self-inflicted wounds, offensively, special teams decisions, they just haven't put themselves in prime opportunities to be able to be uh, competitive in this game. And I mean, the rain is coming down right now on this second down carry. It's Booker once again, and he's ridden out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Give him a couple yards on the pickup as Robbie Grimsley, Grimsley excuse me, the freshman free safety, pushes him out of bounds. There you see the third down conversions today. Three for 12 against this Bison defense. Can't win with that type of number. And we talked about it earlier. The Sycamores wanted to extend drives, suck up the time of possession in this game, and they just have not been successful in any fashion doing so. Third and six. Adam. Sacked. Brian shakes, gets the sack for the Bison back at the six yard line. Left guard gets beat, just a nice swim move between the center and the guard. Number 78, Zach Borens, offensive lineman for the Sycamores just could not get the job done again another three and out for the Sycamores. That's now two and a half sacks on the season for Brian. Ume. Perkins will let this one bounce and it'll go out of bounds at the North Dakota State 39 yard line. 9.49 left in the final quarter of play. Bison. Getting the bounce back. Looking for it today after losing to South Dakota at home. They lead by two touchdowns. Bison up 28-14. Dana, it's been an incredible ride in the last four years for the North Dakota State Bison. An unprecedented four straight national championships, including the thriller last year against conference foe. Illinois State. Outstanding job by the Bison year in and year out, always in the conversation, always the top of the Missouri Valley Football Conference, representing this conference in excellent fashion. Four straight years, national champions. Amazing. Seven teams in the Valley ranked in the top 25 this week. In fact, nine teams receiving votes. Chase Morlock with that first down carry. And here's the problem for Indiana State, the fact that you've got a team that's averaging about five yards per offensive play, 
a team that's number one in the nation in time of possession. You're down by two scores and under 10 minutes left, even though you're at home here in the fourth quarter of play. And then you add to that, Scott, a quarterback, a young quarterback, playing like a senior, making good decision after good decision, and athletic enough to make some plays with his legs. He's going to go up top, deep, on the play action and incomplete as he tries to get Zach Fraw, who's only had the ball thrown to him, what, two, three times today. Absolutely, and you have to give credit to Coach Kleiman and taking a chance downfield, play action in the backfield, good strong throw, just a little bit too far. But trying to talk about trying to put a dagger in your opponent. That's the type of play with nine minutes left in the ball game that you do that. Sets up the screen. Lance Dunn, penalty flag. Dunn, great effort, gets the first down into Indiana State territory, but again, a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. It's a nice job by Dunn. I like how well he, how, how he handles the ball and runs with the ball, specifically in the open field, very elusive. They call this as holding on the center, and there you have it is Conlon Cassidy again, a force in the pass game for against the Bison, and look like look like a little bit of a ticky tack call there. That's the eleventh total penalty we've had today between these two teams. In fact, we really didn't have our first penalty until midway through the second quarter. 30-19. And they'll play it safe and go to the ground game. And they're on the stop for North Dakota State was number 40, Cottrell Moss. King Fraser carries for the Bison. He's brought down by number 40. Moss. That young man has a bright future. Getting his opportunity in the game today. He's really come up clutch. Watch number 40 scrape from the right side of your screen and just attack the line of scrimmage, doesn't allow the ball carry to get up on him. Booker calls for the fair catch at the Indiana State 31 yard line. There you see Easton Stick again, his first career start in place of the injured Carson Wentz. And the young man has had himself quite an afternoon. Two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown for the Bison to lead them to this 14-point lead with 8.03 left in the fourth quarter of play. Amazing job in that program. And as you look, the upcoming schedule for the Sycamores will be tough. <laughs> All ranked teams. Illinois State at Northern Iowa, Western and Youngstown to wrap up the season here at Memorial Stadium on November 21st. Adam in the pocket and a beautiful play, Nick DeLuca. One of the impact players we were watching closely throughout this game, really haven't called his name a lot, but he still has an impact for this defense. That last play right there, Matt Adam had to try to check the ball down. They had double coverage on Gary Owens, still without a catch. Adams under pressure, throws incomplete in and out of the hands of Robert Tanyan. And there was good coverage by MJ Stumpf. Again, just a seam route, trying to take advantage of cover two. With Tanyan Jr. splitting the safeties. That's a nice job reading the eyes of the receiver. MJ Stumpf dislodges the ball. It's like a little confusion by Indiana State trying to get 11 guys on the field on this third and 10. Trying to set up the screen to Tanyan, and it is sniffed out immediately. 
only a couple two three yards for Tanya but a terrific defensive play there MJ Stump again coming up and this is just zone coverage keeping the ball in front of him textbook and how you want to teach third down defense when the offense has such so much yardage to go got an unbalanced line on this punt situation ume has been busy One's an end over in, and again, the fair catch is called by the Bison very wisely with 7.02 left, 28-14 the score for North Dakota State. Well, as we showed you, not getting any easier as far as the schedule is concerned for Mike Sanford's Indiana State Sycamores. They go on the road the next two weeks as they will take on Illinois State at Bloomington Normal, then Cedar Falls at the Uni Dome to take on the Panthers. Indiana State, 94 yards of total offense in this second half, 81 of them coming on that TD run of 81 yards by Adam. I think the Bison defense came to play today. <laughs> on the end of round, Carry made by Dimitri Number Williams. Number four, Dimitri Williams takes the handoff for North Dakota State. And Scotty, it gets tough if you're Mike Sanford and you are evaluating this Walker. film. It's one Second thing down. to get beat by a team that's better than you. It's another thing to not execute your game plan and lose a game. But when you have self-inflicted wounds that cause you field position, momentum, and points, that's just tough to digest. Another end around this time, it's to Anderson and good pursuit by the Sycamore defense to avoid Darius getting the first down as he'll fall about a half yard shy. The defense came to play for the Sycamores. I've been very impressed with how this defense has stood up against a very tough Bison offense. They gave him a first down. First down for North okay. Dakota State. The only thing about I will say about the Sycamore defense, costly penalties today. Yeah. Costly. Otherwise, they played terrific. Well, they give Anderson the first down on that carry somehow. <laughs> and now the sun comes out for the first time in the afternoon. And obviously the Bison with the two touchdown lead are gonna run the football and try to run this clock out Number and pick up their fifth win of the season. The Very impressed with the Bison, the Bi Second bounce back. Down. They could have been down and out, not only losing at the Fargo Dome for the first time in three years, but again, as we talked about at the top, losing their starting quarterback, which more than likely could be for the rest of the season. Absolutely, and that just tells you how much confidence they had in the redshirt freshman because they haven't seen to miss a beat they haven't seemed to be to have any kind of lack of confidence or changing game plan dummy down the offense for the young quarterback it's just business as usual and Morlock has absolutely no running room whatsoever Alec Lyons the initial hit by the Indiana State defense as the Lions and the Sycamore defense know exactly what the Bison are doing there that was actually a power eye on that last set for the North Dakota State offense. Well, it's all over the left guard. You can see he gives up a push up front, doesn't drive forward. Zach Johnson playing that left guard position. That's twice in the last two drives where he's gotten beat. Just not proper technique. In this running game, you have to push forward. Stick. On the draw, trying to get the first down. I think he got it. He needed seven, and I think he got eight, Danon. Nice job by the redshirt freshman again. This Number leads this offense, and if there was any question, maybe not expected this year, but next year and for the next three years thereafter, if there was a quarterback that could fill the shoes 
of Carson Wentz. I think they found a good one in Easton Stick. Well, think about this. If you go into the backfield, you got Stick, a redshirt freshman for Coach Kleiman's North Dakota State Bison. You've got Lance Dunn, a redshirt freshman. Bruce Anderson, a freshman. You got Morlock, who'll be a senior next year. And you've got King Frazier, who will also be a senior next year. So your four running backs are going to come back next year. And you think about this, time of possession, you rotate those four running backs. Look Number how fresh they probably are in the third, especially in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And then you add in that you have Joe Haig as the senior left tackle and then Jeremy Kelly, the right guard. Everyone else on that offensive line is coming back too. So have a a slew of returning starters who have game experience and can help you possibly to a sixth national championship? Hmm. Big running hole there, straight up the middle into Indiana State territory as that carry was by King Frazier, one of the two juniors in the North Dakota State backfield. Hague's a guy that I think it'll be shocking to all of us, the starting left tackle for Coach Kleinman's North Dakota State Bison. That he's, if he isn't playing on Sundays next year, that will be a shocking development. Absolutely. Big mobile offensive lineman with a nastiness. Sometimes they can be tough to find. Frazier. And that's a smart run by King yes. Frazier there. there. That's coaching, folks, because King could have taken it to the outside, tried to take it to the house, but he kept it inside, tried to keep the clock running. And bad news for Mike Sanford's team as Conlon Cassidy is down and in some pain right at the 40-yard line. We just hope this isn't serious. The Sycamore team is really been hammered by injuries throughout this season as he's trying to get up and walk it off that's a good sign very good sign but talk about the injuries sustained by the sycamores alec lyons earlier this year had a concussion against purdue and now he's back jordan jackson had a, a torn acl connor underwood not playing with the hamstring and stowers with a knee injury so several guys on the shelf. Yeah, Connor actually re-injured a hamstring last week. They're hopeful he's back next week against Illinois State. Meanwhile, upcoming schedule for the Bison after this game on the road against Indiana State. They're down in Carbondale next week on Halloween to take on the Salukis, then at home against Western Illinois. Then on the 14th, as you see, they'll take on Bo Pelini's Penguins and they'll wrap it up at home against the Missouri State Bears. So you really only have two of your last four games against ranked teams. Yeah. Conversely, Indiana State has all ranked teams <laughs> in their final four weeks of the regular season. It's not easy in the Valley, folks. Not at all. Second and one. Done. Doesn't get the first down. And we have a timeout called by Indiana State. 32nd timeout. Good pressure by Pierre G. Tucker. Stops the momentum and forces this third down. We talked about Coach Sanford, who has done an amazing job here uh, taking over for Trent Miles at Indiana State. The first playoff game last year for the Sycamores. Went to UNLV and actually uh, took over for his High school, college coach and John Robinson was at Louisville and of course at Utah State before he took over the reins here in Terre Haute. There you see, actually he's been coaching since 1977 after he graduated from USC Southern Cal. He was a graduate assistant for Coach Robinson there in Los Angeles. In fact, was a quarterback for USC and was a quarterback for the 73 and 74 Rose Bowl teams. In fact, that 74 Rose Bowl team knocked off Ohio State for the national championship. Stick Quarterback sneak for the first down, he gets it. They'll stop the clock and move the chains 
more than likely one final time here this afternoon at Memorial Stadium. And for Coach Kleiman, we mentioned he has been around the Missouri Valley Conference for many, many years as he actually played his college football in Cedar Falls at Northern Iowa, as you alluded to earlier, Dana. Yes, obviously part of a great team there with Kurt Warner at the helm, but six different schools. He's really done a great job and had some huge shoes to fill when he took over this job for the Bison. And they did not miss a beat with the change in quarterback. Not only taking over the hook coaching reins after three national titles, but also had to pretty much reconstruct an entire assistant coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely. And that just tells you that there's a difference between, Scott and you and I have talked about it, there's a difference between having a good team and having a good program. And the Bison is of the tops in the country, FCS. They do an amazing job year in and year out, always in the talk of national championships, NFL caliber players, great support by the fans in Fargo. They travel well. They do. Amazing all around. By the way, the next week, our next Valley Game of the Week, MVFC on ESPN3, will be in Springfield, Missouri. The Missouri State Bears under their first-year head coach, Dave Steckel, who did an amazing job as a defensive coordinator for many years under Gary Pinkle at the University of Missouri, now taking that program over for the Bears. They'll take on South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, and Coach Stig really doing a great job this year. And that will be at 2 o'clock Central Time. As Connor Easton Stick will go down on one knee. And again, we take a look at the upcoming schedule next week. Again, we'll be at Missouri State. Bears taking on South Dakota State. Indiana State on the road in Normal. Take on Illinois State. And here are the Bison with their victory this afternoon. We'll travel down to Carbondale to take on the Salukis as North Dakota State will head back to Fargo. Bounce back. What a way to bounce back, Dane and Hughes, as they come away with a 28-14 win. Came into a tough situation, had some questions on offense, particularly at the quarterback position. But credit to their preparation, understanding of their what they wanted to accomplish offensively, defensively, and special teams, and also being in a position to maximize opportunities and mistakes made by the Sycamores catapult them to this victory. Sycamores fall to four and three in the season and two and two in conference play. Meanwhile, for the victory for the four-time defending national champion, North Dakota State Bison, they're now five and two overall and three and one in conference play with their victory here today by a score of 28 to 14. And obviously the big story in today's game for the North Dakota State Bison was their new quarterback. Easton Stick, as you see, the Bison's upcoming schedule once again as they'll be in Carbondale next week. But Carson, excuse me, Easton Stick taking over for Carson Wentz after he went down with that injury after the loss to South Dakota. And I have to say that the young man performed so well today in leading, literally leading the team to this 14-point win. Well, what you look at his numbers, it seems like Carson Wentz actually played, and that's not a negative to Carson, but just a huge positive for that young man. And he's only a redshirt freshman getting hugs all around recognition properly so that young man did a great job in a tough situation no question about it as Easton stick with two touchdown runs and a touchdown pass for the victory for the bison right now he's downstairs with her own Sarah Daly all right Scott thanks Easton if there were any doubters out there about you taking over as quarterback you pretty much uh hush that down for the rest your legs strong what are you going to do for this next game and looking forward to the next schedule uh, the offensive line and tight ends played great today Prim perimeter blocking was excellent and I just followed the big guys up front so all the credit to those guys and we just got to keep getting better every day we got to bring a mentality to get better and try to go 1-0 every day and quickly how supportive was uh, Carson Wentz this whole situation 
The support I get from him since I stepped on campus has, has been unbelievable. I can't thank him enough. I love him like a brother, and, and I really appreciate everything he's done for me. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Easton, congratulations, Sarah. Thanks so much. So Stick and the Bison win today by a score of 28 to 14. For Dana and Hughes, Sarah Dale and our entire web streams production crew, I'm Scott Warmer to get the final score 28-14 to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com.